G shape B chord pentatonic and major scale position one or G shape B chord position or scale. Get ready because it's time to rock and or roll. We are in our Excel worksheet, remembering that we have the top string on top, that being the low or heavy E string, the one closest to the ceiling, the high E string, the one closest to the floor on the bottom, the zero representing the open fret, the one that, if indicated, we would not be putting our finger down on, but rather ringing it out as open frets, one, two, three, four, and so on, the ones that we would be putting our finger on, if indicated, indicated in this case by the orange items down below. We're now looking at the G shape and the B chord position let's move up top to the starting point so we can recap what we have done the G shape and the open position as most people will learn it here remembering that you want to keep in your mind separate the idea of it's a G shape because you're going to remember that but it's going to be in the open position you got to keep that in your mind so that you can then not contradict yourself in your own mind by saying well it's a G shape but in the open position and then I move it up it goes to a A here and it goes to a B here so I can use that same shape to move it up I can call it a G shape without it confusing me because it's an E shape it's a B G shape in the open position okay so we also note that this is not the standard type of bar chord so it's not something that we can move up as readily and be able to adjust our fingers to, to accommodate for the open items down here barring them off noting that that's okay we could still see it in the same position and we could still make chords from that position as well for example you can take a look at something like this and see if you could finger something like that different voicings of the chord we can arpeggiate it and if you're using a finger style picking the top strings and the bottom strings with your fingers then this could be a very useful shape of course as well we're going to name it by where our finger is on the e string that's the easiest way to know where you are on the fretboard with it obviously there are other g's in here and if you know the other strings that could be another anchoring point for you but typically if you memorize the top two strings the bassier kind of strings that this kind of system will allow you a lot more flexibility by anchoring on that top string so then if we moved it up, we can move it up to the A. By the way, we could move it up to G sharp. We could move it up to A sharp, but we're just going to move it up to B here. So now we're moving it up to B. It's B because now if I was to put my fingers in the position of a G chord, just like I normally would, which means I can't strum the whole thing out because this com component right here is no longer going to be an open position. I would have to bar it off. But if I just finger it the same way, then we've got our fingers here here and here and pointing to that b that's where you know that's where you want to know that string and you can say now i now have a b chord so you can then use this you can you can use this position which is an interesting position that people don't always use to kind of strum out a b type so a movable kind of shape that you can use and you can also of course arpeggiate this position and you can use it to anchor where you are on the guitar let's go ahead and, and name the notes in the b scale now just for practice with our with our theory so if i was to take the notes and just name them and just list them from b to b it would look something like this if we applied our whole whole half progression we would go from b whole step to c sharp whole step to d sharp half step to e whole step to f sharp whole step to g sharp whole step to a sharp and then back resolving to b so that would mean that the notes in the b major scale would be b c sharp d sharp e f sharp g sharp a sharp and b sharp man that's a lot of sharps that's why b maybe not the most common one that's played in but sharps don't make anything more confusing really once you know the positions and whatnot but they, they you know when you list out the progressions they could be more confusing so everybody learns the, the key of c obviously specifically because mainly it doesn't have the sharps and flats but in any case it's not once you learn the shapes then you can apply the shapes out even if you don't know exactly the progression every note in the chord that's the beauty of the guitar the symmetry is nice so we've got then the note the letters of one two three four five six seven we can then pick the one three five for the notes that would be the b the d sharp and the f sharp so the B, the D sharp, and the F sharp. So we got the B here, D sharp, F sharp, and then we've got a B, D sharp, and then a B. 
So those are going to be the notes. Obviously, many of them repeat in this big full shape. So then you can look for shapes within it to voice out the chord if you choose to in different voicings. Or you can use this to arpeggiate. If people are playing B with a bar chord over here or something like that, then you can move up and play something in this position, which could voice it a little bit differently. You're kind of, you're kind of around the same area, but you're voicing things a little bit differently, which can complement the song in a way that would probably be more pleasing possibly than just playing the same B possible bar chord. So then let's unhide some cells here. I'm going to unhide some cells and take a look at the pentatonic position. Unhiding. Remember that this pentatonic position, and this is what's kind of funny because this is the number one pentatonic position. So when you see it, when you see this position as a G and you're saying, well, in the cage system, it's a movable thing, but it's not as movable as like an A chord or like an E chord because it's a, you got this whole open thing unless you're doing like finger styles and whatnot. But it also happens to be like the most common <laughs> rock and roll kind of shape that most people first learn. I would call it position one, which would look at something like this. Many people learn in the key of C or A minor right in the middle of the guitar. So you can you can name that basically as the main, you know, the core pentatonic scale. If you just say like a pentatonic scale, people will probably pick this one as the one they first learn. And you could call that, you know, I would call it position one. You can also call it then this G position. And that could be useful because if I scroll down here now and say, okay, now I'm in the G position in a B chord. So you're basically going to say this is a G pentatonic scale position. What does that mean to people? People are going to say that. What, this is a G a G chord pentatonic scale. And people are going to say that's contradictory because, or they might say that if they're not familiar with that kind of terminology, because it's just, it's just going to be something to help locate where you're on the fretboard. But you're basically saying, yes, the chord has three notes. The scale has five notes. But I'm playing the scale that's most comparable around the G, the G shape when played in the B position because the root up here is a B. So we're going up here. We're playing a, we can note that we're playing here a, a G shape if it were in the open position in a B chord because I'm pointing to the root, which is a B, and then adding the pentatonic scale over the top of it in that position. So it's a G shape chord pentatonic position in the key of B because that's where we are on basically the fretboard. And then of course you could use that to try different voicings of your chord, try to put in or pull in notes from the pentatonic and or then pick around and accentuate uh, the songs or licks or whatever that you're playing. Then of course we can add to that the notes in the major scale so now we could say, now we're just adding the other couple notes. So now we're saying it's a G shape. If I was in the pentatonic position, G shape chord, major scale. Again, you made a jump there from a chord, a G shape, G shape, penta, G shape, major scale shape. And you kind of made a jump from a three note type of thing to a seven note thing. But if people kind of know this system, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to say those notes that are in this basically four to five fret area around the G shape. That's what you're basically looking to, to name. So once again, let me try it again because I kind of butchered it last time. We'd be saying we're playing a G shape chord if it was in the open position in the key of B and then major scale, meaning the notes around it adding to it that would be complementing it to get it up to the major scale. Again, you can add those notes as notes if you're picking along, if you're trying to accentuate your chords and so on. So let's just further analyze this B, this B chord or this if we were to play a song in the key of B and, and apply what would generally be picked, what you can pick then in terms of the chords you can use. You could say, well, if I'm trying to play a song in the key of B, typically you can pick from a B major. You've got a C sharp minor, a D sharp minor, an E major, an F sharp uh, major, a G sharp minor, and an A sharp diminished seventh, which you usually just drop off and you don't pick that one. So, <laughs> and then if you play the one, four, five, it would be a B, an E, and an F. So if someone was playing the key of a one, four, five in, the, in a B major scale, 
then you can play this shape over the whole progression as it changes from B to E to F. Or you could try to take this shape and you could try to move it at, up the fretboard. And you can move it, of course, to the sharps as well. We just haven't been doing that just to save time. So we're focusing in on, the, on not the sharps and the flats. But you can, same position, same kind of idea would work uh, in that way as well.